My name is Jeff Poland. I'm a nationally registered paramedic, and I'm also working on a couple of fellowships, one in the Academy of Wilderness Medicine and one in the American College of Paramedicine. And uh, this, coupled with my uh, my background in, in science and in medicine, gives me a little bit of a, a unique perspective in, in looking at uh, what tr expertise truly is, what it looks like, and the consequences of, of the death of, of expertise. While it's not a traditional um, sociology or, or social issue, I, I really think uh, really think it can be, and um, I'd like to thank you guys so much for uh, for listening. So let's go ahead and uh, and get started. First things uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of disclosures here. Uh, first of all, I have no conflicts of interest, financial or otherwise, in relation to any of the content presented herein. But you know that's actually not quite true. Um, I do have a conflict of interest, and while it's not financial, it's the same conflict of interest that uh, you have and, and that all of us as human beings have with regard to, to expertise. Um, we're going to take a look in, in, in just a couple minutes at, at some definitions, but experts are, we, we have experts for a reason. And while the everybody gets a trophy and everybody's opinion is equally valid and needs to be respected is, uh, I mean, I, I suppose arguably great for a kindergarten classroom. Unfortunately, when it comes to real issues, there are real consequences to ignoring recognized experts. But uh, before I continue to use this this word uh, expert here, let's go ahead and look at a couple of definitions. Um, the first definition is, of course, expert, and I think I've said that word about uh, 60 times in the last two minutes. So let's go ahead and figure out exactly what I mean when I say the word expert. Uh, when I say expert, I mean a person who has a comprehensive and authoritative knowledge or of or skill in a particular area. Um, for example, after uh, six years working in, in uh, anesthesia and then another two in emergency medicine, um, I feel that I'm a little bit of an, an expert in, in airway management. I've done uh, quite a bit of uh, study on the matter. I've attended quite a few courses. Um, I've done quite a few uh, intubations, that's, you know, insert of uh, breathing tubes, and managed quite a few, uh, you know, critically injured and uh, critically ill patients with regards to, to airway management. However, because I'm an expert uh, in that, and admittedly it's a self-proclaimed expert, um, I am by no means an, an expert in quantum physics. Uh, but that does uh, that that doesn't mean that uh, Deepak Chopra is uh, is an expert in quantum physics either. Um, there's also there's also a layman, and uh, a layman is a person without professional or specialized knowledge in a particular subject. And I'd like to make one thing perfectly clear here. A lay, being a layman isn't a bad thing. I am a layman when it comes to quantum physics. I am a layman when it comes to auto mechanics, and I am a layman when it comes to electricity, how the TV works, and I am definitely a layman when it comes to cleaning up my apartment. But I think part of that comes from being a 24-year-old uh, male in college. Um, so... I, I'd like to, 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 to definitely make that, that clear at this point. I'm not knocking anybody who's a layman. All that I'm trying to get across with this presentation is that there's a difference between an expert and between a layman, and not everyone's opinion is equally valid. You do have a right to your own opinion, but as we're going to take a look here, I'm going to provide two examples of when your lay opinion has caused real-world harm, uh, and that definitely brings me to, to our next definition here the definition of dangerous and um, to, to really sum up what dangerous is we really need to look no further than uh, than this picture um, for those of you that don't know this is Miss uh, Miss Vane Hare I'm, I am so sorry I uh, little little uh, Freudian slip there Miss Vanny Hari uh, Miss Hari is the the food babe um, She's uh, made herself known with, um, you know, in, in recent years by uh, attacking Subway initially with their um, acetylcarbonamide, um, which we're going to talk about later. And um, she is a self-proclaimed expert in food, uh, in food science and in nutrition, despite the fact that she only holds a bachelor's degree in computer science. Um, that's like with, with me saying, you know, my uh, almost finished degree in... Um, 
uh, I'm sorry, my almost finished degree in um, paramedicine coupled with my fellowships in uh, paramedicine and in wilderness and environmental medicine uh, makes me an expert at cardiothoracic surgery. Although personally, I trust myself a little bit more than uh, Mehmet Oz if I, I had to uh, go, go under the knife for cardiothoracic surgery, but I'm actually not going to talk about him today. Um, we're talking about uh, Miss Hari here, and as I said, despite her only education being that of uh, computer science, she's an expert. Um, she's uh, an expert in physics. Uh, for example, she, you know, talking about uh, air travel. When your body is in the air at a seriously high altitude, your body and undergoes some serious pressure. Just think about it. Airplanes thrive in places we don't. You are traveling in a pressurized cabin, and when your body's pressurized, it gets really compressed. Whew. I, uh, I don't know. Every time I read those words, it uh, kind of hammers in the point that just because you say you're an expert, you're, you're not an expert. Um, it actually kind of makes me wonder how seriously high uh, Miss Hari was when, <laughs> when she wrote this. Um, first of all, when you're in, in an aircraft, the aircraft is pressured, but it's really pressured uh, against the ambient uh, pressure. For example, the uh, air pressure at 35,000 degrees is different than the, the pre or, sorry, 35,000 uh, feet is different than the pressure at 5 feet or at sea level. Um, and in reality, when you're at 35,000 feet, the aircraft is really only pressured to about eight to 10,000 feet. Um, so really, it, you're under less pressure than you would be if you visit my, my home city of Denver, um, and about the same amount of pressure if you were to uh, visit the Leadville, Colorado, which is the um, highest elevation city in the uh, continental United States at about ten or 11,000 feet. Um, she right here is asserting herself as an expert in physics and as an expert in travel and an expert in travel healthcare and just the most rudimentary of um elementary school education renders this uh this uh, this statement here utterly null void and 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 honestly quite laughable um but it, it gets better from, from that very same article. She asserts herself as a pulmonology and an ambient air expert when she states, the air that you are breathing on an airplane is recycled directly outside your window. That means that you are breathing everything the airplane gives off and is flying through. Also, the air that's pumped in isn't pure oxygen either. It's mixed with nitrogen, sometimes at almost 50%. To pump a greater amount of oxygen in costs money in terms of fuel, and the airlines know this. The nitrogen may affect the times and dosages of medications, make you feel bloated, and cause your ankles and joints to swell. Unfortunately for Miss Hari, C seems to have uh, missed that day in, in kindergarten or elementary school when they discussed the composition of the, the ambient air. Um, for those of you that don't recall, the uh, ambient air is only about 21% oxygen. Um, we did try to, you know, increase the, the amount of uh, ambient oxygen, but as you know, anybody involved in the Apollo missions can tell you, uh, <laughs> that's not really a great idea. Oxygen, of course, is, is an oxidizer and can cause uh, fires, uh, amongst other very nasty things. Um, in addition, even breathing in 100% pure oxygen isn't good for the body as it increases production of oxygen-free radical species, and um, there's actually been an, an interesting trend in uh, pre-hospital medicine and pre-hospital emergency care where we're moving away from giving pure oxygen to uh, to people without good reason and and I, I think that, that that's a great thing um, we've recently found that increasing the um, partial pressure of oxygen that you you breathe in that is you know the the amount of oxygen included in each breath increases the formation of reactive oxi uh, oxygen species and can can increase uh, tissue death and tissue damage and in certain circumstances uh, it also causes a bunch of actual changes within the lungs because your body is going to react to that extra oxygen um, I for one am glad that uh, the air in in the aircraft is mixed with nitrogen and hopefully it's uh, a little bit over 50 percent it's at uh, it's at about the the 78 percent that uh, that it is in the you know in, in the air that the ambient air that, that you and I are breathing right now um, 
of course, uh, you know, the other elements that, that make it up is about 78% uh, nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% uh, miscellaneous gases, uh, carbon dioxide, and, and argon being chief amongst them. Also, it's, it's worth noting here that um, you're not breathing everything that the airplane gives off and, and is flying through. It's actually uh, ex exceedingly filtered air and replaced actually about every two to three minutes, uh, probably more filtered than the air in your, your office. Um, also, it's uh, taken from the inlet, not the, the outlet, so there's no just jet exhaust mixed, uh, mixed in with that. The one thing that I will give her, though, is that the air is pretty dry, but unfortunately, I don't believe that article mentioned anything. Uh, she, <laughs> she took it off when, you know, somebody finally decided to do a little bit of fact-checking on her. Um... But uh, you know that 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 really has only only been kind of recent. Miss uh, Miss Hari kind of got her start talking about uh, chemicals and food, and as you can see, she's uh, she's an expert in this as well. When you look at the ingredients, if you can't spell it or pronounce it, you probably shouldn't eat it. Which is of course why we never eat cyanocobalamin. Uh, the the hig the the hydrogen uh monoxide one three four five pentahydroki two hecanun uh chol chol cal chol cal ergo cal and azodicarbonamide um obviously we 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 don't eat any any of those chemicals um i mean obviously uh you know cyanocobalamin for for one um you know i i make sure that that uh, i never eat that uh i always get my vitamin b12 uh injected once once a week through the through the uh uh, the doctor. Um, dihydrogen monoxide is, is another one that, that I, uh, I never eat it. I make sure that I drink my uh, H2O, my dihydrogen monoxide, my water uh, with my meals. Uh, the next one, 1345-pentahydroxy-2-hexanone, uh, um, that's definitely pretty chemical sounding and definitely pretty scary if you didn't know that uh, that this was fructose. Um, fructose, of course, being the sugar that's found in uh, in plants, in corn, uh, even organic corn contains the same one three four five six pentahydroxy two hexanin um, that uh, the non GMO and the organic corn contains. Um, uh, cholecalciferol and ergocalciferol, of course, uh, vitamin D. Uh, D3 and D2 are absolutely essential for mood regulation, for calcium uh, retention and, and, and calcium metabolism. Um, then the uh, the last one here, the acetylcarbonamide. Um, I, I had mentioned that a little bit earlier with uh, with chemicals. Um, that's kind of how she got her start was getting the, this chemical removed from uh, the bread that Subway uses because uh, this is also used to make yoga mats. It's it's the so-called yoga mat chemical. Um, unfortunately, the uh, acetylcarbonamide isn't toxic uh, unless you're 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 inhaling very large amounts of it. Uh, in fact, when used in the subway bread, azetocarbonamide is used as a leavening agent, which is the same thing that's used in the yoga mats. Uh, it's used to give both bread and yoga mats that spongy uh, kind of air-filled texture. It actually degrades into, um, I believe it's a sulfur dioxide uh, gas, which of course uh, dissipates and, and is not at all harmful to the, uh, to the end product. Um, but uh you know i mean hey maybe i've just taking a couple of a uh, couple of things out of context here i mean yeah i'm kind of cherry picking some some big words and i mean if you saw an ingredients list like this um i mean fiber you know, i mean just lo look at that i mean that's not even the, the normal kind of dietary fiber um it, it's the weird kind of uh european fiber and, and it's e460 whatever kind of variety that is mixed with um muristic acid and pamatoleic acid ethanolate Methylpropanin. Who would eat methylpropanin? Methylbutyl. Methyl, when you add a methyl group in chemistry, then it makes things explosive. Uh, butyl from butane, of course. And I mean, that's what we use to light our cigarettes, um, which, of course, are totally healthy for you. Um, the, I would never eat any of that. I mean, uh, butanoate, there's another. Look at all of these scary, scary chemicals in here. If you saw this chemical list, would you feed this to uh, to your children? 
Ouch! I know I wouldn't. But, uh, you know, I'm sure we all would if it was, uh, you know, an all-natural organic banana. Um, the, the point of that, of course, is um, that chemicals, are, uh, chemicals are, are, are friends. Everything is made up of chemicals. You and I, we are nothing but chemicals. What makes us us is uh, our, our chains of, of DNA, our deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, I mean, there's no such thing as, as chemical-free anything. I mean, we're all made up of, of the same uh, base elements, just, just arranged a little bit differently. Um, one other thing that uh, Ms. Hari likes to, to go off on are, are GMOs, or genetically modified organisms, or Frankenfood produced by Monsatan, um, which are, are other misnomers that, um, you know, are, are things that... Maybe she really shouldn't be talking about. Um, to date, there have been uh, there, there have been no foods that have been more studied than genetically modified organisms, and with the exception of one exceptionally poor uh, study, and and I say study with uh, with air quotes, um, done by uh, the the fool uh, Serlini. Um, which uh, which falsely linked uh, tumors in rats to to GMOs and was retracted by the the journal um, and then republished in an open access journal that's just <laughs> really under underwent absolutely no peer review. It's it, it's it's almost textbook how not to do science. Um, really, the the genetically modified foods are are completely safe. Um, there are legitimate issues with it, but unfortunately, when you look at the rhetoric that that, that Miss Hari uses. Um, it's just not, it's a little bit outside of the scope of, of this particular presentation, but it's just not something that uh, the issues that she brings up really, really are non-issues in it, and it really detracts from what we really should be talking about. Um, and in addition, there's there's a lot of direct harm, and you know, I mean, while not necessarily uh, Miss Hari's fault um, directly, the outrage over specifically genetically modified organisms resulted in um, Zambia in 2002, Mozambique in 2003, Angola in 2004, and Zimbabwe in 2010, amongst many other countries. All of these countries being under severe famine with people dying every single day, real legitimate people dying every single day in those countries they all rejected shipments of food which could have saved lives because it was genetically modified genetic modification for things like inserting vitamin a into rice um, vitamin a deficiency of course especially in the third world is a leading cause of blindness golden rice is is one of the first genetically modified crops to be used over there um, been extensively studied uh, inserted gen uh, vitamin a into the rice and as a result less children over there are blind um, a true benefit but as it stands, it's it's being rejected by those countries out of nonsensical fear mongering by um, upper middle class to upper class uh, first world country suburbanites like Vane Hare, who decide that it's okay for her to make a profit based on the suffering of real legitimate people. But. Uh, most of you guys know who who Vain Hare was before I before I brought her up. Most of you guys, I bet, don't know who this is though. This is Norman Burlog. Uh, Norman Burlog is a food scientist um, who, over the last uh, since since uh, about uh, nineteen twenty five or so, or I'm sorry, nineteen thirty or so, he's uh, he's been working on. Um, various uh, genetic modification, crossbreeding, um, and, and the like uh, to, to improve the lives of people in third world countries. Norman Burlog in 1970 won a Nobel Prize for saving one billion people. That's one billion with a B. This is what a true hero looks like. Unfortunately, uh, almost nobody knows knows who he is. Um, 
in addition, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Burlog has has kind of ran the numbers and and working these things out using only conventional. Uh, I mean, he's he's a true expert, and um, you know he's he's ran the numbers and using only organic farming methods, which is something that that Ms. Hari uh, advocates for. We can really only feed about uh, five billion people. The population right now is is around seven billion. I would uh, I would really like to know who uh, Miss Hari thinks should uh, should starve to death, because if we do what Miss Hari, the so-called self-proclaimed expert with a computer science degree, says, then um, you know that's going to be some some hard decisions that that we're going to have to make, and uh, I really don't want to be don't want to be a part of of that decision making process. So moving on, um, still talking about uh, textbook definitions of uh, dangerous. We have uh, this person here. This uh, this is Miss McCarthy, Miss Jenny McCarthy. Um, before we uh, we go any further here, let's uh, let's go ahead and give her a little bit of an, an introduction. I'm going to do this a little bit differently than uh, than I did for for Miss Hari. Um, Miss uh, Miss McCarthy, a couple of highlights of uh, of her life. Um, we've got, of course, her hair. Um, if you take a look in there, there's there's obviously quite quite a few highlights. Although eh, that picture kind of has some roots showing too, so maybe that's not a highlight I, <laughs> I should have included. Um, she also was a Playboy model, which you know, of course, that coupled with her mommy instinct um, makes her absolutely qualified to judge uh, matters of of public health, as you'll see here in in just a moment. Um, and she also married the Grinch. Um, I mean, of course, that was one of uh, Jim Carrey's best roles, and uh, both Jim Carrey and uh, Jenny McCarthy have have really, really become known. And kind of the highlights of of their career and the highlights of their life are that they were responsible for the death of six thousand two or six thousand two hundred and sixty eight uh, people, mostly children, and the illnesses of one hundred and forty two thousand three hundred and forty four people, also mostly children due to vaccine denialism. <clears throat> Vaccines are the single most effective public health measure ever in all of recorded history. People like Jenny McCarthy, based on a fraudulent, retracted study which resulted in the author's medical license being pulled uh, in, uh, in 1999, or sorry, 1998, uh, Andrew Wakefield, based on that one single article they uh, they decided that um, you know people like uh, Jenny McCarthy with with her mommy instinct and a couple of other unscrupulous uh, fear mongering ignorant illiterate scientifically illiterate uh, people some of them doctors um, have decided that uh, you know vaccine denialism is 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 okay or that you know vaccines cause autism um, all of those are are. are completely false. While there are very minuscule risks to uh, vaccines, they overall have done far more harm, or uh, correction, far more good than uh, than any harm that's, uh, that's come from them. Um, truly, it's uh, a tragedy what 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 miss mccarthy is is doing what miss mccarthy and her cohorts are doing they're ignoring the expertise of those who studied and dedicated their lives to improving children to improving health to improving uh safety to decreasing morbidity and to decreasing mortality they are spitting in the faces of these professionals with their mommy instinct we should really go back in, uh, you know, 100 or 200 years when mommy instinct was the uh, the the go-to for um, for child rearing and for medicine, and to take a look at infant mortality rates, and we'll you know really see if mommy instinct is the the best way to go about these things. Well, that's great. That's just fucking great, man. Now what the fuck are we supposed to do? We're some real pretty shit now, man! You finished. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. What the fuck are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? Maybe we could build a fire, sing a couple of songs, huh? Why don't we try that? We better get back, because it'll be dark soon, and they mostly come at night. Mostly. It's not quite time to, um, to, you know, build a fire and, and sing a couple of songs quite yet. But... It is time to uh, 
to, to take a little bit of action on, on all of our parts. Um, and I've got a couple of suggestions to do that. I'm, I'm going to try as, as best as I can to end this on a, on a happy note. I mean, despite the fact that um, obviously I get, I get very passionate about the, the subjects which, which I've discussed, but, but I'm going to do my best to, to end this on, on a happy note. First of all, there are legitimate experts, and, and we need to listen to them. We need to recognize that it's okay to be a layman. It is okay to not know every little thing about everything. Um, but, you know, I mean, if you're like me and you, you really want to understand, and you want to be able to have, have an educated and, and an informed opinion on things, then there are a couple of things we can do. We can learn to think critically. Uh, we can, along that same lines, we can evaluate everything with a critical eye uh, and recognize when we're in over our head. These three kind of all go together. Um, thinking critically, evaluating what you're told with a critical eye, and recognizing when you're in over your head are, are all things that kind of have to do with recognition of logical fallacy as well as uh, recognition of Dunning-Kruger and the Dunning-Kruger effect. Um, so of course logical fallacies are all things that we can do or, or I'm sorry, all things that, not that we can do, but things that we do do, <laughs> um, things that we do when we are under uh, stress, when we're under um, when, when we're evaluating things, um, their their connections, their patternicity. Uh, there's great talks by uh, Michael Shermer um, on on these these logical fallacies uh, and, and and kind of why we believe strange things and, and why we believe things uh, before we can evaluate them with a scientific method and before we can uh, evaluate them with um, you know, through through the lens of, of expertise. Um, also with uh, people like um, uh, Vanny Hari and uh, Jenny McCarthy, it's really important to remember Hanlon's razor. Um, you know, while Occam's razor, I'm, I'm sure you all are, are familiar, is, um, you know, given uh, two competing hypotheses, the one which uh, or the one which assumes the least is most often correct. Um, Hanlon's razor is um, never attribute to malice uh, that which can be adequately explained by incompetence, um, which is uh, something I, I find myself almost uh, every day being being reminded of. Um, not all of these people are, are, are out to get you. Uh, Jenny McCarthy maybe truly does believe that, that her mommy instinct is... Um, is, is more valid than, than all of the scientific research, um, admittedly with some, some disastrous consequences. Um, it, it's obviously very emotionally charged when, when emotions are involved. Perhaps incompetence rather than malice is a, a better explanation. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't go for, for people like Mehmet Oz. Um, Oz is, is just a, a pimple on society, and he honestly should have his, his medical license revoked for, for gross gross misconduct and, and, and conduct unbecoming of a, of a physician. Um, but uh, regardless, um, you know, remember Hanlon's razor, remember the, the Dunning-Kruger effect that, um, you know, the uh, people who are, who are new to something tend to really overestimate their ability to, uh, to do it. It's actually pretty, uh, pretty, pretty amazing, um, the, the research that that's been done by, by Dunning and Kruger as far as... Um, evaluating uh, how adept people are at performing uh, given tasks and what they found was that um, there's a great disparity between a person's rated ability to do a test and their a or to, to do a task and their actual ability to do it um, up until you hit a certain level and when you hit that level where you recognize when you're in over your head and where you recognize that you know hey these things just really really don't quite add up and and I don't understand this um, you know, those are, uh, those are things that, um, that we should, uh, or th those all fall under the, the Dunning-Kruger, uh, Dunning-Kruger effect, um, and it's, it's really quite a, a, a phenomenal, um, bit of, bit of research, and, uh, <laughs> I would highly suggest you guys go and, and take a look at it. Um, so I'd like to, uh, to thank all of you guys for, for listening in, and, um, you know, for <laughs> uh, sparing with me for for the last about half an hour or so, um, I can be contacted. Uh, you know, through through any of, of the the means above. Um, if you have any questions over any of the content in in this uh, presentation, um, 
Thank you, uh, thank you all so much. Please watch uh, that video in the uh, in the links. I think it's a, a great and and uplifting way to uh, to end this talk. But I, I don't have um, have permission to use it. And I'd like to to credit the the original author. Um, thank you all so much, and uh, please please enjoy the rest of your day.